Silent Hill. Silent Hill is unsettling. Not just because of its monsters, but because of the real things they represent. The loss of a spouse, the grief of losing a child, parental abandonment, the list could go on and on. It turns real things that we fear the most into twisted manifestations. To top it all off, a game of Silent Hill's caliber would not be complete without a demonic cult pulling the strings behind the scenes. The atmosphere, the music, the storyline engulfed the players into a dark world of rituals and sacrifice. It sure sounds like the makings of a terrifying experience. Welcome to Silent Hill 3 Retrospective. Silent Hill 3 is a survival horror video game developed by Teen Silent, a production group within Konami Computer Entertainment Tokyo. Published by Konami for the PlayStation 2, the third installment in the Silent Hill series, and the direct sequel to the first Silent Hill game. It follows Heather, a teenager who becomes entangled in the town's cult, which seeks to receive malevolent deity. Upon Silent Hill 3's release, it garnered positive reactions. These reactions were given to the general horror and atmosphere developed by the game. From the music to the terrifying ambient sounds, this game manages to have possibly the most terrifying atmosphere in any Silent Hill game. Negative criticisms of Silent Hill 3 largely steam from the lack of any innovations in its gameplay. The game does play very similar to its predecessors. Although I would disagree that this game does intensify its atmosphere. However, it doesn't change much about how the game plays. I don't think that's a bad thing for Silent Hill. However, the same critics who criticize Silent Hill 3's lack of innovation in gameplay would be the same critics who came down so hard on Silent Hill 4 for trying to do something different. I still will never understand why Silent Hill 4 is so hated amongst fans. It tried to be a little bit different than the first three games, which is what they wanted Silent Hill 3 to be. Yet when it changed the format a little bit, people hated on it. I personally love that Silent Hill 3 kept the same gameplay as Silent Hill 2. I don't really feel like there was a need to really change a lot of the mechanics in the game. I think the fan base really wanted just more of the same. And I think that's proven when you see how people reacted to Silent Hill 4, a game that drastically changed the way it played. After Heather has awakened from her nightmare, she awakes in the shopping mall inside of a burger restaurant. Before she can leave the shopping mall and return home to her father, private detective Douglas Carlin confronts her, claiming to have information about her birth. Heather then attempts to evade the detective by going into the women's bathroom. Inside of the women's bathroom, Heather finds a window that is open. She decides to crawl through to put more space between her and the detective. After Heather evades the detective, she discovers that the mall is mostly abandoned. She soon finds herself alone. Once inside the abandoned mall, Heather realizes that there are strange monsters lurking around. As Heather wanders through the mall, she encounters a barefoot woman dressed all in black with blonde hair. Hey, she is a high priestess of the Order. It's Claudia Wolf. 
She's been searching for Heather, or Alessa rather, for 17 years. Claudia tells Heather that her talents are required and that she needs to remember her and her true self as well. And that she will lead them to paradise with blood-stained hands. How should I know? Heather then comes down with a serious migraine as Claudia departs. As Heather enters the elevator, its descent causes a radio to drop from the ceiling, which emits static whenever monsters are nearby. The elevator's door opens, revealing a second, more sinister looking elevator that indicates a crossover into a, another reality. Once again, Heather finds herself inside the other world, which is a nightmarish version of the mall. Not only is it abandoned, she's still alone, and there are monsters everywhere. Once at the bottom of the Central Square shopping mall, Heather is attacked by the Splitworm. The Splitworm is the first boss in Silent Hill 3. Even though Heather is frightened, she manages to make it back to the real world after the battle with the Splitworm. Thereafter, Heather once again comes into contact with the detective. Once everything is back to normal, or at least it seems to be, Heather heads for the subway so that she may return home. However, Douglas stops her again. Heather assumes that the private investigator is on Claudia's side, but he tells her that he was only hired to find her. I'm getting really screwy around here, and I got a weird feeling it's got something to do with me. Maybe you're just an innocent bystander, but I can't feel sorry for you because you dragged me into this. There's something. I've been running from and forgot for a long time. I'm taking the subway home. Heather leaves the bewildered old man alone and enters the subway. What should I do? Just like the mall, the subway is deserted, with the exception of a couple of odd monsters here and there. Heather even has a close call when she narrowly avoids being run over by a subway car. She then takes the aforementioned subway to the underpass.
Heather then makes her way through the sewer-like corridors until she reaches a construction site. Soon after, Heather encounters a man named Vincent Smith, who is also a priest of the Order, but he has different views on where the cult should go. After a brief conversation, she abandons him as well, forcing her beliefs that there is something wrong with him as well. You mean Claudia? Please don't lump me together with her. She was totally brainwashed by that crazy old hag. I guess crazy old hag is a bit harsh. She is your mother, after all. My mother? What do you mean? You don't remember? Uh, Harry didn't tell you anything. I guess he hid the truth to keep you on his side. Hey, that figures. He's a pretty sneaky guy. Don't talk about my dad like that! Sorry. I apologize. Please, calm down. How do you know my father anyway? I know yourself a bit longer. Enjoy? I feel like I'm going crazy. Doesn't this place get to you at all? Oh, it gets to me all right. I find it most fascinating. Wait! I'm not finished talking! I knew you were on her side. How do you figure? There's something wrong with you too. Upon arriving at her home in the Daisy Villa apartments, Heather discovers the body of her father, Harry Mason, slumped in his chair. Having been brutally murdered, Heather is shocked and speechless at her father being taken away so suddenly. Once she regains control of her emotions, Heather follows the blood trail to the apartment's rooftop where Claudia is waiting for her. Her motive for killing Harry Why? is that he thwarted the Colt's plan 17 years ago and that killing him would fill Heather's heart full of hatred. Claudia tells Heather that she wasn't the one that killed him, only that she gave the order to her companion, the beastly, monstrous missionary. Claudia then tells Heather that she will be waiting for her in Silent Hill and leaves the apartment. There is another reason to fill your heart with hatred. It must be this way. One day you'll understand why. No, I'll never understand! You must try to remember me and your true self as well. Paradise. 
he's the one who killed your father. I merely gave the order. So, what will you do? I'll be waiting where all begins. After killing the missionary, Heather finds Douglas inside the apartment. Douglas then helps her move Harry's body into his bedroom, covered by a sheet with flowers. Heather pays her final respects to Harry to and decides to find Claudia and kill her in revenge, despite the fact that Douglas tells her revenge is not the answer. Douglas then offers to drive her to Silent Hill which she reluctantly agrees to. Just... Calm down! How am I supposed to do that? My father is dead! He's murdered! Get out! This is all your fault! If it weren't for you... I'm sorry. Then go! If it make you feel better... I will. Is he okay like this? What else can I do? There's no one here to give him a decent burial. I don't know what kind of hell is waiting for me there, but I've got no other choice. I don't care about God or paradise. If that's what she believes, then fine. But she won't get away with what she did. When I find her, I'll kill her myself. I don't need your help. Yeah, but it's too far to walk. Besides, I'm partly responsible for this. I'll bring the car around back. Come by and we'll finish saying goodbye. You know, you might die too. That's fine. Nobody's gonna cry over my grave. Outside of the apartment, Douglas hands Heather a map of her destination for a guy and a gift from Vincent. He tells her that Vincent says to look for a man named Leonard Wolf. What do you want to do? He also gives her a notebook from her father, him, which acts no as an choice. explanation of Heather's past and as a final goodbye to her. Here, take this too. What's this? Your father was holding it. It started raining. Are you sleeping? I'm awake. You cold? What's the deal with Silent Hill anyway? It used to be a nice, quiet little town. But now... You've been there? Once on a missing person's case. Never did find him. A lot of work. You hear a lot of nasty rumors. I was born and raised there. <sighs> Sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. No offense taken. Things terrible happened in Silent Hill 17 years ago. Am I still friends with Carl? A woman named Dahlia. I'm sure she tried to summon the ancient god of the town. She offered up her very own daughter. That's crazy. Maybe so, but it worked. The girl gave birth to a god. But in the end, that 
God was killed by a single person. My father, Harry Mason. I guess it wasn't much of a God if it could be killed by a human being. After the God was killed, the girl reappeared. She was holding a baby in her arms. Before she died, she gave the baby to my father. He loved me just like I was his very own daughter. Even though he didn't know who or what I was. was so sudden. I never had a chance to tell you, to tell you how happy you made me. Heather and Douglas arrive in Silent Hill. The town is deserted and covered in fog. The following day, they set up refuge at Jack's Inn and then split up. Heather heads for Brookhaven Hospital while Douglas goes to search for Leonard Wolf's house. Gonna be okay alone? I'm not a child, you know. Are you sure it's not you who's afraid to be alone? Fifty something years old. I've never seen nothing like this. I still feel like I'm dreaming. <laughs> More like a nightmare, I'd say. <sighs> yeah. I want to wake up and have a smoke already. Meet me back here when you finish looking around the hospital. Okay? Roger. Soon after entering Brookhaven Hospital, Heather learns that Leonard is imprisoned within the hospital. Heather realizes a startling discovery about herself, long forgotten. She is the reincarnation of Alessa Gillespie, and she has memories of Alessa's life, previous to a fire she was burned in at the age of seven. Have you come to apologize? Or maybe you still don't realize how foolish you've been. The salvation of all mankind. Ah, what a ridiculous dream. Wait, just listen to me for a second. I've heard enough from you already. How did you turn out this way? Where did I go wrong? Listen to me already. Who are you? Leonard Wolf. I'm sorry. I thought you were my daughter. Claudia is your daughter? Are you one of her followers? No, never. When I find her, I'm... I can feel the hatred. What? Heather, will you help me? Help you? I'm locked up in here, and I must stop Claudia. Where are you now? I'm not sure myself, but the door is at the end of the hall on the second floor. Heather enters the nightmare realm once again, and it is here that she encounters Leonard Wolf, who reveals himself to be the father of Claudia. Unfortunately, Leonard has degenerated into a monster and attacks Heather. Upon defeating Leonard, Heather will acquire the seal of Metatron, which is a talisman that is possessed by Leonard.
out our plans, of course. It's true that God is merciful, but first, one must be chosen. Only we, who hearken to the voice of God, will be given the keys to paradise. I didn't deceive you. We were both just wrong about each other. I thought you were a normal person. So, you tried to trick me so you can run off with my seal, eh? Heretic! You plan to destroy God! I told you I wasn't trying to trick anyone. What is this seal thing anyway? Don't play innocent. You can't fool me anymore. The seal is mine! I was appointed by God to be its guardian! Heather awakens, and the hospital is normal once again. Leonard's not here anymore. Leonard is dead. Heather returns to Jack's Inn to, in to meet up with Douglas. Now. However, just before she returns, Claudia and Vincent Douglas have a conversation okay. about the cult, as well as Leonard's abusiveness to towards Claudia. God's everlasting paradise. And you think God is going to save you? Ha! Huh. What do you know anyway? I know about the pleasures of this world. And I want to find my happiness while I'm still here. Yes, yes, and that's why we need God. What you call faith is nothing more than a child crying out for love. That's why you're all alone. Understand. None of you do. Heather continues her search for Claudia inside the Lakeside Amusement Park. Oh, hell. Upon entering the park, she enters the other world again. Heather follows the path to the roller coaster. In another part of the park, Claudia and Douglas are arguing. Douglas feels betrayed by Claudia, saying that while she says that Heather was kidnapped and brainwashed, he feels that Heather is actually a happy person. Claudia then explains that they need Heather back into the cult because of God. God needs to be born to usher in a new paradise, an eternal world filled with no pain, no hunger, no sickness, or old age, greed, or war. Douglas then points out that a place without any worries or negative implications is not really a paradise, but rather a stagnant world where nothing happens of any real value. Douglas sighs, saying that type of world would be pointless and boring. In response, Claudia tells Douglas that she pities him. The detective then pulls out his gun and points it at her, and what happens afterwards remains a mystery. Mother of God, truly, you still don't understand. You're going to kill me? Is it really so easy for you? I've done it before. Then I truly do pity you. After exploring the amusement park, Heather eventually runs into Douglas once again, but he is unable to come with her due to his broken leg. It's implied that he had been intentionally damaged by Claudia using her power of psychokinesis. 
Heather promises to come back when she is done with things, and she comes to find herself in the same area of the amusement park where Harry was 17 years earlier. Getting yourself hurt like that? Sorry. Why did you have to do that for me? What'll I do if you die? What'll we do if this god thing gets born? <laughs> Come on. How powerful could a god from a dump like this be? <sighs> I'm sure it'll be no big deal. Yeah, but anyway, something's gonna happen. Uh, who knows? Maybe we'd all be better off if it did. But if this is how I got a mercy axe, I don't want to see any more of it. That's a pretty good reason to risk my life, don't you think? Plus, I'm just an old fool, right? You think you're Superman or something? You know... I always wanted to be him. Besides, yeah. I want to help you out. You don't have to feel responsible. I know it's not your fault. You, you remind me of my son. You said nobody was going to cry for you. Dead people don't cry. Stupid kid got himself shot. But why? Maybe because his pop was a penniless good for nothing. Who knows? Anyway, now I guess I'll never find out. <sighs> Sorry. I shouldn't have said you reminded me of a guy like that. <laughs> well. Maybe if you had compared me to your daughter. <laughs> Listen, I'll take care of the rest. You stay here and I'll be back when it's over. You'll be okay by yourself. Hey, no problem. Dad's not around anymore, so only I can do this. What are you doing? Maybe killing you here is the only way to end this nightmare. On the carousel, Heather encounters her doppelganger, the memory of Alessa, the other Heather. The other Heather is bloodied and severely burnt and wishes to stop the birth of God at all costs. After defeating her dark self, Heather reaches the entrance of the cult's church. Heather encounters Claudia inside the chapel and tells her that Alessa is fine with the world the way it is. It is unknown if this was actually Alessa or just Heather pretending to be her as a way of manipulating Claudia. Claudia has a strong will and explains that there is too much suffering in the world and the god of her cult will change all of that. Although Heather explains that suffering is a fact of life and that Claudia must face that reality and not hurt anyone. Heather also tells Claudia that she will never forgive her for killing her dad, Harry. Heather suddenly feels pain as the god is close to being ready for birth. Soon after, Claudia leaves. But I am Alessa. You 
my little Claudia, my dear sweet sister. Alessa, is it you? Oh, how I've missed you. I don't need another world. It's fine the way it is. But you said it yourself. The world must first be cleansed with fire. But that's not what I want now. Alessa, don't you want happiness? Have you become blind to all the hopeless suffering in the world? We need, we all need God's salvation. Listen, suffering is a fact of life. Besides, I'll never forgive you for hurting my father. I wish only for the salvation of mankind. But for that to happen, the world must first be remade. And for that, we need God. You self-righteous witch! No one asked you to help! It's growing within you. You despise me, don't you? You're damned right I do! That's good. While fighting her way through the corridors of the church, Heather encounters Vincent inside the library. He asks her about the seal of Metatron, which Heather has in her possession. Vincent is relieved, as he believes it can be used as a weapon to defeat Claudia. Hiya, Heather. You show up everywhere, don't you? You make me sound like some kind of unwanted pest. Well, who are you anyway? Haven't you realized that yet? Yeah, you're on Claudia's side. I told you not to put me in the same category as that man quite sane. So why did you help me out then? Was that also part of trying to resurrect God? It's not uncommon for people to worship the same God and still disagree. God? Are you sure you don't mean devil? Whichever you like. You come here and enjoy spilling their blood and, and listening to them cry out. You feel excited when you step on them and snuff out their lives. Are you talking about the monsters? Monsters? They look like monsters to you? Don't worry, it's just a joke. Heather finally catches up to Claudia inside of the cult's inner sanctum. Claudia wounds Vincent by stabbing him from behind, and Heather is somewhat taken aback by this action. After Claudia calms down, she resumes her usual composure. Heather then points out that a god who believes in hate can never create a perfect world, to which Claudia retaliates by saying that even a joyful world can be a cruel place, and that in order to understand sympathy, one must also know pain and suffering. Vincent, still alive, desperately tells Claudia that Heather has the seal of Metatron. Claudia then reveals that the talisman is nothing but a useless trinket before stabbing him. Resulting Vincent. in Vincent's death. Paul, you'll go to hell! What did you do? Listen, my dearest. For the pain that I've caused to you, I deserve no mercy. Even if it was to save mankind, it was too deep a sin. It was hubris for me to try to hasten the day of her arrival. Sacrifices were made for those of my sin.
You feel so guilty about it? Why don't you go to hell? Heather, use the seal! Vincent? The seal of Metatron? Now your stupid dream is over! Oh, that's just a piece of junk. What do you think you can do with that? Do you really think it can kill God? I'm sorry to see you fell for my father's foolishness. What? You're pathetic. Heather nearly succumbs to her rage after calling Claudia a bitch, but finally gains control of herself and she swallows the capsule of Agalophotis, known for exercising demons. That was inside the pendant around her neck. She promptly vomits a bloody fetus of the god onto the floor after taunting Claudia. Looks like God didn't make it. Stop! God is... Claudia! Inside the chamber, Claudia is dead. After giving birth to the god, Heather then discovers the beastly deity, which resembles a repulsive skeletal body with a reptilian female dead. face that resembles Alessa's own face. I was gonna kill you. Due to Claudia, God has been reborn. Heather must now defeat God. This is the final boss fight in the game. After Heather defeats the god, the game will come to an end. 
Silent Hill 3 proves to be a great sequel to the original Silent Hill story. The story told as part of the atmosphere was received very well, making for a satisfying, coherent sequel, although its status as such meant it may be a little tough to follow for people who haven't played the first game. Despite efforts to help people catch up, in addition, the graphics, audio, and production values were all credited with adding to a great atmosphere. Story aside, my personal feelings for Silent Hill 3 are that it's a fantastic game. I feel like they really executed this sequel very well. What Silent Hill 3 manages to do perfectly is build a fantastic atmosphere. This game is terrifying, especially on your first playthrough. The music, the ambient noises, and the voice acting all goes hand in hand here to make for a fantastic experience for fans of the series. Silent Hill 3 is held in super high regard, not only within the fan base, but in the world of survival horror video games. All in all, Silent Hill 3 is a fantastic experience for any fan of the series, or any fan of survival horror video games. Is my Silent Hill 3 retrospective. Um, if you guys enjoyed the video, um, please uh, smash that like button. It really helps the channel out. Um, and if you guys like the content and you want to see more of these retrospective videos, um, maybe subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and you'll be uh, notified as soon as videos drop. And um, I plan on doing more of these retrospectives. I really enjoyed it. If you didn't catch it, my last, uh, my last retrospective was Silent Hill 2, and it's right here. If you guys want to check that out, it's down below. Um, maybe give that a watch if you enjoyed that game. And yeah, I uh, appreciate you guys watching the video and uh, catch you in the next one.